The fifth law of the seven spiritual laws of success is the law of intention and desire. In every intention and desire, you have the mechanics to achieve or to obtain that which you desire. The fact that you desire something shows that you can obtain it. Have you ever desired to just become a worm and start digging through the ground? No, because you can't do it. You won't survive. Every single desire that you have, like I really want you to think about all your desires right now, all your intentions for the future and whatnot. You have them because you're capable of achieving them. You will never desire anything or have the intention to do anything that you don't already have the mechanics to obtain. So don't you find that quite exciting? That right now, if you have the intention or desire to be a billionaire, that you can do it. That you have the ingredients to be able to achieve that result. Everything at its core is just information and energy. See, I don't know if you've done biology, but in bio, I was told, well, I, well, from what I remember, is that in your DNA, like your DNA is a thing that makes you up. It determines what you become. All there is is energy and information. You are energy and information. Your desk... The one you're sitting at is energy and information. Your phone is energy and information. The only difference between different things is the organization of that energy and information. You know, yesterday I was listening to this Alan Watts sermon. It's not a sermon, but you know what I like. It's just an Alan Watts video. And he said that, you know, the human body, what makes up the human body is about 95 cents worth of elements. Like if you were to buy like the magnesium, the copper and whatnot, it would be 95 cents worth of it. Well, he said 95 cents. I don't know when he was recording. Then probably in like the 80s, 90s. So 95 cents then is probably like, uh, like $10 now, $15. Your body, like the cost to make your body, if you just took the raw elements, would be like $10. But the only thing that makes you valuable is the organization of the elements of the information of the energy so the beauty of being a human being is that we are capable of becoming aware of energy and information and because we're capable of becoming aware we're also capable of changing the energy and information of our bodies and the things around us i don't know if you've gotten deep into quantum physics or you know that i have weird stuff but anyways albert einstein he is famously quoted of saying that everything is energy and if you truly dig deep into that statement that's the truth because a certain emotion will bring about a certain energy. A certain thought will cause a certain energy. And that energy will make you behave in a certain way. So if you constantly behave or operate in a certain energy, that energy is going to become like your base state. So the energy that you're in is going to dictate the type of life you're going to live and the results that you're going to get. So now you're thinking, oh, yeah, you've told me about energy and information, but how does this link to the law of intention and desire? So the way that you change the energy and information around you or the, your energy and information is through intention and desire. So intention comes from the word intent. So what intent is, is a desire without an attachment to the outcome. So that's why it's intention and desire. You need to have both and intention being the most important because when you desire something, all your attention is directed towards a certain outcome. So if all your attention is, is directed towards a certain outcome, you have so much energy that you're losing that you can just use to focus on the intention, focus on doing something right now. So intention is always for the future. You never intend to do something right now because to intend is in the future, I intend to eat breakfast just now. Intention is for the future. So you should always have the intention of something, but your attention should go towards the present moment. Because as long as your intention is in the future, that you have a certain view of what you want to create in your life, a certain view of the circumstances that you want to have in your life, as long as your intention is in the future, right? And your attention is on the present. And it's very hard to fail to achieve or to obtain whatever you want because if your attention is always in the present it means that you operate you give yourself the best chance to create the life that you want because the future is created in the present so if all your attention is towards the present moment then imagine how great your future could be anyways how to apply this law the first step is to be still simply be still allow yourself to be still to just be and focus on the space that's between thoughts to focus on nothing. So when you're in this stillness, be silent as well. And just subtly keep your intention in mind. The intention that you have for the future. 
You see, you subconsciously do this already. Whenever you're still, whenever your mind isn't occupied and you just sit long enough for you to be quiet, there's always an intention for the future that comes up. You may not notice it, but I know for a fact this is how I am. If I allow myself to sit for long enough for my mind to be silent, there's always a subtle intention for the future. Like, I intend to get stronger. There's just that intention lingering there. And it's like I let go of that intention. So you can do the same thing. Just allow yourself, sit down, allow yourself to be still. And when your mind is quiet, firstly, you'll be able to realize the current intentions that you have because a lot of our intentions are subconscious. So you'll be able to realize those first. And once you realize them, you can introduce your own intentions, intentions that you have consciously decided. This is more quantum physics stuff because like once you introduce a certain intention it's going to change a core part of your energy and then that's going to result in you doing more things and changing the way you act but you don't need to know how it's going to change it just know that it does help and the next thing you can do is let go of your attachment to the outcome when you let go of your attachment to the outcome it also allows you to just operate in the best way to operate using the least amount of effort so now you see how law five is linking to law four Everything in this is just interlinking and it's going to end up making sense, I promise you. And then step four, after letting go of your attachment to the outcome, is just to let God handle the rest. You have your intention for the future. God gave you those desires and intentions. And if those desires and intentions are pure, then you don't have to worry about them coming into fruition. Let God handle the rest. You focus, you put your attention on the present and God will handle your future.